Welcome to Hot Book Girl Summer. Hi guys, welcome, welcome back to my channel and welcome to part two of my series where I'm reading my favorite booktubers' favorite books. Obviously, this one is all about Destiny Sidwell. Y'all know her, you love her, she is amazing. And I am so excited for today's lineup, so let's take a look at it. If y'all don't remember how it went when I was reading all of Steph's favorite books, I ended up with an average of a 3.75 star rating, which I feel like is not too shabby. So I'm excited to see where Destiny's gonna fall on this scale. We will be reading Firefly Lane by Chris and Hannah, Bad Reputation by Becca and Krista Ritchie, and Better Than Movies by Lynn Painter. So without further ado, Let's get into it. I'm about to start Firefly Lane by Chris and Hannah. I literally know nothing about this book except it's a Netflix show and that my heart is going to be shattered into a bajillion pieces. So that should be super fun. Going into it completely blind. I've heard it's amazing. Obviously, it's one of Destiny's favorite books. I'm definitely intrigued. I feel like it won't take me long because I downloaded the Kindle copy. And for some reason, every single time I read anything on my Kindle, I fly through it and I become an unstoppable reading machine. So it should be a good time. Let's get started. All right. The lighting in here is literally horrible right now, but we're going to roll with it because I have time for an update. I am... I think 9%, oh no, 10% into the book right now. It is literally already sad. It is already sad. I, I can't tell you why, but like look at the trigger warnings because I did not know the trigger warnings going into this. And then I just hit a scene that was so incredibly sad that came out of literally nowhere and I just wanted to cry. I just wanted to cry. A scene that we had in the situation that occurred led to their friendship and like the beginning of their friendship, which also made me want to cry because both of these characters needed someone in this moment for different reasons. But like they both needed someone because one of them never felt seen and then the other one, oh, I can't even tell y'all because spoilers, and this is gonna be a spoiler free vlog, but I'm already loving this, like truly 10% and I'm already loving it. I've never seen the show. I've never seen spoilers for it, spoilers for the book, anything like that. I just know it's going to be sad and I already agree with that sentence because I've already felt like crying and I am obsessed with the friendship. I am, there was a scene where they were literally putting sun in, in this girl's hair to give her these like natural looking highlights. And then she shaved her eyebrows instead of plucking them. And she went home and her mom was like, just a tip, like maybe you should pluck them next time. Like that's probably a safer option. And I just keep thinking to myself, that is so real. Like that is an actual experience and I feel like I am in this story. Like I feel like I am with these characters and I understand why it's been adapted. At least 10% in. I understand why it's been adapted because her writing style is so descriptive to the point where I physically see it. I, I see the vision and I'm here for it and I'm scared. <laughs> um, so that's my update right now. And I think I'm gonna be emotionally destroyed. Yay. It's currently 11, I need to go to bed, but you best believe I'm going to be reading this in bed. So catch me in the morning with an update for y'all. Who knows how far I'm going to be because the writing style is so easy that I just feel like I could get lost in and just keep going. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But good night. Little update, I'm literally 18% into this thing because I could not put this down last night. I'm actually obsessed with it. Now onto part two, we've left the 70s, we are entering the 80s and I, just love it. And this book is just so good. It's so good. I've already been sad so many times, so many more times than I can even count. I have been sad. And it's just the beginning. I'm literally right at the beginning. So I don't even understand what on earth is in my future for this book for it to get even more sad, but that's okay. We will literally talk about that later, but I love it. It's just so descriptive and it's just a true female friendship. And I think that that is so glorious and beautiful. And I think this could be a five star. I can't believe we're going to start off this video with a potential five star. Like this is what I want. And if this is how all her historical fiction pieces go, then I've been putting off The Nightingale for literally no reason. I've been putting off that book for so many years because I'm not the biggest historical fiction fan that I just assumed I would hate it. But if this is how it goes, then I need to read that ASAP. Moral of the story, I'm having a great time. I'm gonna sit down, read another pretty big chunk of this book and then update y'all sometime in the future. We'll see if I cry again because I've already cried twice. Y'all haven't seen it, but I cried last night in my bed over a certain scene because I was like, this person 
person cannot take any more things being thrown their way, but apparently they can. Apparently Kristen Hanna says that they can. It hurts. <sighs> Date time. I've made it to part three. And y'all, I've been having to take this book in such small doses because it is heavy and it hurts. And I feel like literally every single trigger warning under the sun is in this dang book. And I'm just like so scared for what's coming my way, but I also need to stop putting it off and I just need to be strong and finish this dang book. Like that's what we're gonna be doing. And so we're just gonna sit here until I'm done. We're just gonna sit in this one spot until I am done. So this is probably gonna be the last little update before I give y'all my review on this one. But my, oh my, it is so heavy and I don't know what the heck I'm going to end up rating this book because I can't stop thinking about it. But also, so much has happened. Like, so much has happened in this book. And then I find it really interesting because in like part one and part two, there was one character that I just wanted to shake and be like, you're okay, you're okay, you're okay. Like, get out of your own head. And I kind of feel like the end of part two and then I'm predicting part three, it's going to shift to a different character. I don't want to say I like the jealousy in this book because I don't, but I also feel like that's very realistic, especially since it's not like jealousy of like little like materialistic things. It's of the way people treat a certain person. And I feel like this is my prediction. And again, no spoilers whatsoever, but I feel like it's going to switch and it's going to end up being the opposite person feeling this way because one person has completely devoted their life to their big dreams and yada, yada, yada while the other is kind of following in suit, but you can kind of tell that she really doesn't want the same goals and ambitions as this one character. And I feel like eventually it is going to kind of flip and I feel like we will see that jealousy from the other character. That's my prediction. That's my prediction. I also like don't know how this book can get any more sad. Like truly, I know I've already said this, but like this book is emotionally heavy. Let's see how part three goes. I will check in at the end. We're finishing it. We're finishing it. I can't keep putting it off. I can't. Okay, so I lied. There actually is going to be another update because I am now like two or three chapters from the end at this point and it, it indeed got more sad. It got more sad and I don't think that I'm going to be okay in the next few pages and so I just needed to let y'all know this now so that if something happens that I know is actually going to end up happening and I'm not able to process words, y'all at least know how I'm feeling. And that's scared. <laughs> that's scared. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Final thoughts before this happens. My heart is really hurting because I, I see the vision. I see the future. And it's also just like a little life lesson of don't hold grudges. Like personally, I'm someone that holds grudges so badly and don't hold a grudge. Don't hold a grudge, ladies and gents. Just don't do it. And I really don't want to finish this book because I don't want what I know is going to happen to happen. And I'm not going to be okay. <laughs> I'm not going to be okay. <laughs> this is why I've been taking this book in small doses because it's just so heavy. And then this happens. No spoilers, but let's see this happens. <sighs> How is there a sequel to this book? Can someone please tell me that? Anyway, we're going to finish it. I'm going to stop procrastinating. I'm going to read the last few chapters and then we'll talk and then we'll talk. <laughs> I finished it. My face is red. Please ignore that. But I finished it. <laughs> Why? Why does anyone willingly put themselves through this book? Like one, it was beautiful and just so well written, but also it hurt really badly. And I don't know what to rate this book because this does feel like a book that I'm going to think about longer in the future. Like I feel like I will always look back on this book and think about certain things and also as I mentioned earlier it reminds me not to ever hold a grudge because that's me in a nutshell but also like there were certain moments from one character in part three where I just wanted to scream at them being like what are you doing you are not being a good friend what are you doing and I... but also like I feel like that's so realistic like I feel like that's actually life and that's how people actually react to things and how if you don't think things through or you're a little more focused on yourself because it's kind of all you've had is just yourself and all you can really rely on even though they have been best friends their whole life like at the end of the day like things have happened to this one character where it seems like she's the only one she can really rely on even though that's not true so like those decisions made sense but they also like frustrated me so So I think I'm going to give this one like a 4.75 star rating. 
I think. <sighs> Future me will make the final decision on that one. But like, how is there a sequel? And I don't want to read the sequel. <laughs> If you've read the sequel, is it worth my time? Like, how even is there one? <laughs> also, are all of her books like this? Because I just feel like staring at the wall. Like, I just feel like staring at the wall and not doing anything. That is what that book has just made me feel like. And I don't know how to process. And also, like, is the show similar to the book? <laughs> seen the show should I watch it or is it gonna hurt me more I don't know also I shouldn't laugh because it's not funny but like it's a coping mechanism it's how I cope with things and so destiny I don't know whether to say thank you or just like why why <laughs> also I'm probably gonna make my sister read this book because if I have to suffer I'm gonna have her suffer with me and I will be recommending this to so many people. Again, I will be prefacing a lot of the trigger warnings because it is so heavy. But it is a really good book on friendship. And it's just real. Even though there are a lot of crazy things that happen within the trigger warnings where you're like, oh my gosh, how can all of these things happen to like these few people? Like all these horrible things. Like it sort of started to feel like Grey's Anatomy after a little bit. I'm not going to lie. Where like all the traumatic events are just happening to a few people. But the reactions to everything that happened, their internal thoughts, their internal turmoil, it was just so honest. <laughs> it was so honest. Also, I loved the format of the book. I loved how we started in the 70s, went to the 80s, went to the 90s, and so on and so forth. I loved that. We just followed in their footsteps, followed in their lives. I'm really just rambling right now because I don't know what to do with my life after I just finished this. So I'm going to read something happy. We are going to start Bad Reputation because I need, I need a change of pace. I need a change of pace. From this, yeah, from this, okay. Um, future me will have more cohesive thoughts, probably, hopefully. I'm not positive on that, but I, we're gonna say that she will. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna process now, I think. Yeah, yeah. Y'all, I started Bad Reputation and like genuinely just started this thing, but tell me why I didn't know that this is two books. This is literally two books in one, so this is a little bind up collection. So Bad Reputation is, whatever it takes, and then something else combined into one book. So technically I'm out here reading four books for this video. I had no clue, but that makes a lot more sense. It makes me feel a little better because this, this thing is like 700 pages long, but really it's not because it's two, like 300 something page books. Anyway, I also did not realize that this one is so connected to the Addicted slash Calloway Sister series, which is good because it's one of my favorite series to ever exist. That's not a bad thing but I wasn't expecting that. So I'm really happy that I've already read that series because otherwise I'd be so confused at who all these people are. I'd be so confused, but also I didn't realize how big of a part all of the characters from Addicted slash Calorie Sister series play in this book. They play a huge role and it's just making me so happy that I get to see all of my favorite characters again. Like, are we absolutely kidding? I'm also really intrigued with how this romance is even gonna start because again, I'm at the very beginning of this thing. And I don't even think our main characters have met yet. And by very beginning, I'm like 30 pages into it. Also though, and I love the Addicted Slash Calorie Sisters here, so don't get it twisted. But I forgot that like they definitely have embarrassing moments. And so I have already suffered through some secondhand embarrassment. So that's a little unfortunate. And I know that there's gonna be so much more of that in store because that's just what Becca and Krista Ritchie do. But it's okay because I'm back in this universe and I'm so happy to be back with these characters. Like what a pleasant surprise. And also it's making me want to reread the Addicted Slash Calloway Sister series, which isn't a bad thing, but ooh, that's 10 books long. So a little bit of a commitment. Let's get back to reading. I'll give you all an update shortly. All right, I look actually insane, but we're just gonna deal with that because I genuinely was up till three in the morning reading Bad Reputation because I can't be stopped and it's so good. My only complaint and honestly, like it comes with the territory of Krista and Becca Ritchie books. I have a little bit of secondhand embarrassment. I have a little bit of secondhand embarrassment and that's okay. But oh my God, we have like such a shy female main character and like everything she does, I just feel so bad for because I just feel like it, go, it doesn't go the way that she wants it to go. And she definitely has social anxiety, which is giving me anxiety because I'm like, girl, I feel you. I literally feel you. I love our main male character. And I just love that we're back with all of these characters and it's just so 
good. I think I'm about to finish the first book because again, apparently Bad Reputation is literally two books, two books in one. So we're about to finish the first one. I don't think I'm going to give you all a rating until the end though, because rather than average them together or honestly the duet as a whole could be a five star. Currently the first book is probably at like a four, 4.5, but I'm really enjoying it. I'm having a very nice time. I will say it is a little jarring and taking me out of the story because you can tell it's slightly dated because they are talking about like tumblr and american horror story and supernatural and all these things that like are not very modern and you can tell that it was kind of during their time period and so that's a little jarring honestly it's kind of cracking me up but we're gonna sit down we're gonna try and finish up book one and then start book two i don't know if i'll give you all an update after book one or if we'll just roll right into book two but that's all i have for now talk to you all soon i'm having a great time this is like bad boy good girl new adult romance at its finest at its finest when was the last time i gave you all an update because i honestly have no flipping clue i finished bad reputation by becca and krista ritchie i think i'm gonna give this one 4.5 stars i had a really really good time i preferred the second one to the first book in this little bind up the reason that it's 4.5 and not higher is because out of all of the addicted slash Calloway sister series slash bad reputation lineup in this universe. Willow and Garrison are my least favorite couple. And I didn't find myself being like, oh, I want to see more of them. I want to see more of them. Like all the other couples within this universe, like being able to see Lily and Lo and Daisy and Reich and Rose and Connor. I was like, oh my gosh, give me more, give me more, give me more. I'm okay with Willow and Garrison ending with this duet, if that makes any sense. Like I'm okay with their story shutting. So I feel like 4.5 works, but honestly, I will take that. So thank you, Destiny, for this one. I'm excited. So now we're going to be rolling into our final book, which is Better Than the Movies. I feel like I'm matching the cover. I'll insert the cover here, but I feel like I'm literally matching it. I'm feeling like it's a sign that I'm going to love this book. And I hope that I do, because I don't want to be that one person on the internet that hates it. Everyone loves it, and I want to love it too. So let's get started. Let's see what happens. not gonna lie i'm obsessed that each chapter starts off with a quote from a rom-com like are we kidding chapter one literally starts with sweet home alabama saying nobody finds her soulmate when they're 10 i mean where's the fun in that right i love that movie wait i'm actually so excited for this book i am a big early 2000s rom-com movie watcher that is literally what my personality is made up of so i feel like this book might be the best thing to ever exist stay tuned stay tuned but i am excited i'm already getting the five star feeling which is being very very optimistic but i'm excited <laughs> if i didn't know who wrote this book and you were to tell me that jenny han was the author i would a thousand percent believe you because this book is very very laura jean and peter kavinsky coded like I kid you not it feels like Jenny Han wrote this thing and I absolutely adore that and I'm kind of eating it up because I I was the summer I turned pretty girl growing up I was to all the boys I loved before girly growing up like that was my thing and I just feel like I'm back in my element I'm completely loving this I'm about 75 pages into it now and I'm having a great time I'm smiling ear to ear I will say there is a lot more depth in it than I thought that there would be like literally right off the bat literally from the prologue going forward there is that emotional element because we do learn that her mom has passed and it has played a very big role and effect in her life and going forward obviously and i wasn't expecting that from this cutie little rom-com so i'm intrigued i'm intrigued also no one told me that this was an enemies to lovers storyline no one told me that i think if i would have known that i would have read this sooner i really do i really do kitchen making dinner I figured now is probably the best time to give you what's going to be my final update before I finish this book I'm about 100 pages from the end and as soon as I sit down to read it it's going to be over and done with so I feel like you should get one more update for me you know I feel like that feels right I am loving this thing I'm literally understanding the hype and also I kind of wish this would have came out when I was the age of the people in this book like I feel like this is such a good YA novel and it reminds me so much of Jenny Han like to a T it reminds me of Jenny Han's writing style which is just amazing because I absolutely love her I think the reason that it's reminding me a lot of Jenny Han is because Lynn Painter is doing the same thing where it's almost like she's like bottling up that teen experience so whenever you're reading it even if you're not a teen it almost feels nostalgic in a way which is just one of the coolest things because sometimes i feel like ya novels can feel a little cringy and while this one has some secondhand embarrassing moments it's fitting it fits for the time period it fits for the age range and it's fun so i'm about to be done with it i feel like this is gonna be a five star don't want to jinx it but like also this is gonna be a five star
I finished it. And this is like the cutest book I have read in a while. In a while. This was an easy five star. This is an easy five star. And this was everything that I wanted. Why am I just now reading this book? Why have I not jumped on the bandwagon sooner? This was literally everything. A thousand percent worth the hype. And if you have been wanting to read this book, but you're like, oh, I feel like it's been hyped up too much. Read it. Read it. You will not regret it. This is literally amazing. And this was a glorious five star read. And I think it might be my new favorite YA book ever. And that's saying something because I've been a reader my whole life. And this was just a little ray of sunshine. This was literally everything. It was kind of angsty. It was silly. felt nostalgic in the weirdest of ways. And I loved it. As a lover of rom-coms, I loved this one. It was quirky, but not in a cringy way. And it was literally everything in the most dramatic way possible. So five stars. New all-time favorite. So thank you, Destiny. My thoughts really do not feel cohesive right now, so let's go to Future Me where I'll tell you all of my thoughts on every single one of the books and also what the books are about, because I don't think I've said that at all throughout this video. So let's go to Future Me who understands what she's saying. Yeah, let's go see her. All right, let's do a recap. It's been a few days. I've been processing all of my emotions and some of my ratings have changed. So let's talk about that because we need to actually discuss. And also, I don't think I told you all a single thing about any of the books. Did I tell you a single synopsis? Because I don't think so. So shame on me. So let's go through them. Starting off this vlog, we read Firefly Lane by Chris and Hannah. I originally told y'all I was thinking about giving it a 4.75 rating, but I kid y'all not, ever since I finished that book, I have not been able to stop thinking about it. And in my opinion, that's a five star read. That is a five star book. It's something that you cannot move past. And I loved it and I still haven't watched the TV show because I'm scared. Let me know if I need to watch it or if it'll hurt me even more. Just like, let me know, please and thank you. But here's a little synopsis for Firefly Lane if y'all are interested in it. Firefly Lane, we are following Kate and Tully throughout their lives and also how their lives become intertwined. Kate, when she was growing up, never felt like she truly belonged. And then we pan to Tully, who was the popular girl. Everyone thought she was so cool and mysterious, but behind closed doors, like her life was a hot mess and she also felt like she never belonged. And so they were able to bond over certain things. The girls quickly realized that the two of them balance each other out and they essentially become sisters so quickly and both of them needed each other in the time that they found one another and it's just so good you truly are just following them through every single significant moment in their lifetime as they figure out life together as i said this book is heavy so please 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 look into it but this is one of the best representations of a female friendship I have ever read in my life. Highly recommend five out of five stars. This one was so flipping good. So thank you Destiny for this one because this one was a win. This one was such a win. After this book, we read Bad Reputation by Becca and Krista Ritchie. This is actually two books in one. This is a duet. So basically I read four books in total for Destiny's video, but that is a-okay. I needed this book. By the time I finished Firefly Lane, I needed something fun and silly and quick and just a good time and I needed this book. I'm giving it a 4.5 star rating. I love the Addicted slash Calloway sister universe, and this is just such a nice addition to that story. But in the grand scheme of things, Willow and Garrison are not my favorite couple, and I don't foresee myself rereading this. So it's definitely not a five star to me, but 4.5, not too shabby, not too shabby. I really can't tell y'all much about this story just because it is a continuation of the Addicted series, and literally I'd be spoiling a really big chunk of that series by telling y'all, just know a new adult romance, bad boy, good girl, shouldn't be together, can't stay away from one another, those vibes. Also, it's on Kindle Unlimited. Finally, we read better than the movies, and y'all, this was a beautiful five out of five. This was literally worth the hype and actually my favorite book of this video. This was everything and more. I was not expecting this book to truly be worth that because y'all know how it goes. Sometimes the internet is like, this is the best book to ever exist. And then you pick it up and it falls flat. Not this one. This one was so cutie. It was just like a breath of fresh air, a little ray of sunshine. And if you are a rom-com lover like myself, you will love. It also has a little element of depth, which I was not expecting, but I love that in a rom-com. I love it so much. Anyhow, and back in the movies, we were following Liz. Liz grew up loving rom-coms because her mother did. And when her mother passed, her love of rom-coms carried on because that is where she felt close to her mom and where she still kind of felt that connection. I also just want to note that this has made Liz a hopeless romantic through and through, which comes into play when her childhood crush moves back to town moves back to town and Liz is like, this is fate. This is fate. We belong together and I'm going to get him to see this. She even goes as far as enlisting the help of her rival, Wes. Wes takes her under his wing and they kind of formulate a plan to get this boy to notice Liz, but things happen along the way that are really fun and really cute and you will love. You will love. It's just fun. If you like Jenny Han, you will enjoy this book. If you like the Duff, 
you will also really enjoy this book. Let's look at the stats real quick. I've taken all of my ratings from Destiny. I've averaged them together and she ended up with a 4.8 star rating, which is insane. That is so high. And I'm just like so excited. Like this is the dream. This is exactly what I want from the series. So I'm so curious to see how the rest of the series is going to go. If we can keep up this streak, if it'll go a little lower, like we'll have to see. But all in all, like I just hope that I can find new favorites. And even in Steph's video with me only getting like a 3.75 rating from her, I still found an all time favorite book with normal people and so excited to see what the rest of the series holds for us. Thank y'all so much for watching. As always, if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to hit the little like button. And if you want to see more content from me slash the next part in this series, make sure that you're subscribed. But I will see y'all next time. Love y'all.